Hello once again and welcome to the Waters and Stanton video channel. It's spring here in the UK. Would you believe it's uh, temperature is suggesting that it's probably not quite spring yet, but I think uh, as far as the calendar is concerned, it definitely is spring. So we're hoping for an improvement. It's a good time to get outside and think about antennas. What have I been doing recently? Do you know I've had my first 23 Sims QSO the whole of my life. I went on the other day and um, I haven't got a 23 SEMS aerial but I've got a 70 SEMS antenna and the third harmonic of, 20, of 70 SEMS is 23 SEMS and it sort of works. I mean it's a pretty awful match but anyway I worked a station uh, about uh, 50 miles away so that was my first 23 SEMS QSO. I had another CW contact a few days ago. A G3IDY. Now G3s are getting a little bit rare. <laughs> I say that being a G3 myself. But G3i suggested that uh, the guy had either been licensed an awful long time or the license had been reissued. Anyway, I was on CW and asked him, and uh, it was Robert in Shrewsbury, I think it was. And uh, he said he was licensed in 1950 at the age of 18, and he was now 93 years of age, sending very, very good CW. So if you do watch this channel, Robert, thanks very much for the uh, QSO. It's very enjoyable and nice always to work G3s and particularly nice to work somebody who goes back to the 1950s when they were the good old days of ham radio. Anyway, aerials. I've been using the half square antenna for the last, um, what, six months, I suppose. And supported by this, uh, one end is supported by this um, uh, mast here. And uh, it's a bit of a makeshift, really. But, you know, this um, cling film I use to protect uh, the connection is, is weathered very well, actually. Uh, I should say this half square is actually a 20 meter half square. The top section is roughly 10 meters long and the two end sections which have dropped down are five meters long. I have done a, a video on this and I will put a link below this video so you can actually look at it. But I thought I'd sort of assess how well it's been doing over the last six months. The thing I did notice, it is very, very quiet indeed, extremely quiet. And uh, that's a benefit. How does it work? Well, it's basically designed for 20 meters, but because I'm in feeding it, I can make this antenna work on 40, 20, 15, and 10 meters. 20 meters, it certainly works nicely. And on 15 and 10, well, when those bands are open, it works, seems to work equally well. I've got nothing to compare it with, really. Uh, on 40 meters, though, I think the uh, performance is not quite so good. Um, because the way it's designed and because um, the top section mustn't be much more than a quarter wave high on 20 meters. It means to say it's a fairly low horizontal section for 40 meters and the two vertical sections. All in all, it's, uh, it works on 40 meters, okay, but I get the impression it's not really as good as a, as a dipole. So I think when you get to 40 meters, it's, it's probably not as good as a dipole. But the great thing about it is, of course, that it fits into quite a small garden. And uh, as I say, the top section is only 10 metres long. So if you've got a garden that's 10 metres long, I would give it some thought because it's quite a, quite a nice antenna, quite easy to install. And of course, you don't need an antenna matching unit to feed it. You just feed it from uh, the uh, uh, 49 to 1 on, on here. So where are we going to go from here? Well, I'm not sure. I think uh, what I'm going to do, I need to take this down. Let me, let me show you. It's a bit of a makeshift. <laughs> It's a bit of a makeshift arrangement, actually. You see that I use a spider pole, and uh, I've actually got one of these th things that you dig holes in the ground with, um, which I put in the ground as a support. And I did that uh, towards the end of the summer when the ground was quite hard. But as the ground gets softer, so the support, um, you know, this thing that you put in the ground, whatever it's called, um, that starts to move a bit, so I had to sort of brace it with uh, some uh, some uh, cable there, as you can see. But you know, it does the job, and it's kept itself uh, um, upright. Now, this is the cling film 
uh, that I mentioned, and it, it works very well actually. I mean, this is weathered over the winter, no problem at all. It's done done the job, so I'm not so sure I'd recommend it for permanent uh, installation, but certainly uh, for getting things, um, keeping things dry and so forth, uh, it works works very well. Should perhaps also point out that I've got a, a line isolator there. I found that. Um, uh, is very beneficial. It uh, gives a much more balanced um, uh, sort of um, results. So if you look at the VSWR, you get a much more balanced result. You do get a little bit of um, sort of wriggling around on the shape of the way of the uh, um, resonance um, without that. So, and I've always always found that uh, um, the whole thing becomes much more docile, and uh, the SWR makes sense, etc., etc. So, um, always would recommend you put. Um, a line isolator in. I really like the spider pole and this particular one I've uh, removed the bottom sections and a couple of the top sections so I don't want it to, as high as uh, it will go for this purpose. I don't think you can see there um, but the wire goes across and um, it goes down to a mast uh, further down the garden there, if I zoom in a bit, you may be able to see it, hope you can. That's the uh, other end of the antenna, and you've got a vertical section that drops down um, about uh, five metres. In fact, this, uh, this uh, end, that the five metre end, is around about uh, one and a half metres above the ground, uh, just by the uh, garden shed there. And there's a close-up of the spider mast. This spider mast I've had for some five or six years now, telescopic, but uh, it's never let me down, it's very easy to bring down and uh, it goes up to around about uh, 35 feet, I think it's not at its highest at the moment, but anyway, it's been very reliable. Well I certainly need to replace the um, mounting system of this spider mast, it was a makeshift arrangement that I put in uh, towards the end of the summer, but it survived. So I'm going to have to put a concrete um, a mount of some sort in there so it's uh, more permanent. But I think um, I'm going to take this half square down there because I've used it for six months. I've got a feel for it. And I'm going to probably revert either back to an end fed half wave on 40 meters. Um, maybe I will try a doublet, maybe even try a G5RV because despite the fact that G5RVs have had some bad press from some areas, it's basically good air, and in fact, I'm going to do an I'm going to do a, a video about the G5RV, which um, I think will clear up one or two things. But in the meantime, I think probably uh, in fed half wave on 40 meters. The garden here is about almost 90 foot long, so I can easily get a half wave on 40 meters in. Um, I could get a um, an 80 meter half wave in uh, by running it um, down the uh, side driveway of the house. Um, I don't know. I think probably start off from 40 metres and that, that'll give me some idea of the comparison. Now I've done uh, a video before talking about comparisons. It's very difficult to do comparisons between antennas. Um, having had the half square up for six months, I'm hoping after two or three months I'll get some feeling as to how that compares with my NFED half wave. And of course the NFED half wave I will be able to put up a bit higher. So there we are. Anyway, I'll keep you up to date on what I'm doing in my garden here as it progresses. In the meantime, thank you for supporting this channel, much appreciated. Um, and also thank you for your support down at Portsmouth, um, very much appreciated there. Do check our website uh, from time to time. We've got some, some bargains there as well, which we're clearing out, so have a look at that as well. In the meantime, enjoy your home radio, you take care. And as usual, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.